Peace. Black Power. It's Ty here, RBG. Repat Nation is the situation. Shout out to all my RBGs worldwide. All African liberators, African uh, liberation movements, parties. You about the total African liberation and uh, and just nation building, African nation building for our people. Black people, Negroes, niggas, whatever you call it. You about it. You about us. Our come up. As a whole. This is a shout out to you. Peace. Love. Black out. Check this out, man. Um, I guess I, you know, man, it's been, it's been a lot of growing. A lot of ha things happening in our community. And um, some things... You know, we can speak about some things we can go unspoken about. You know, we deal with it. Um, <clears throat> but here's something that I feel that can come on, you know, our enemies' uh, line and hopefully it gets out to y'all because I feel like it's a, uh, it's a part of our solution. Uh, and I like to just take a little while longer than my usual five minutes. I'm gonna, I'm doing this video for those whose, uh, whose attention span is a little bit longer than two to five minutes, all right? So if you got a little bit longer attention span than that, <laughs> this is for you. If you don't have that much time right now, check it when you get a chance, man. I just wanna see what y'all, what y'all think about this, but hip hop. Um, I've been an active student and participant in hip hop for, for in what we call hip hop, about 30 years, alright, from when I first heard my first hip hop song, my pops introduced me to that, sitting in the back seat of, of his old, of that Hornet, I don't know if y'all remember them Hornets back in the day. When I first got a taste of that Grandmaster Flash, Furious Five, the message, <clears throat> I was like, wow, you know, I, I don't even know if I understood what I was listening to, but I just felt like, whoa, that's connecting with me, okay? I come from a musical home, so, you know, when I heard that, something about it said, yo, I felt like, uh-oh, he's speaking to me. This is my lane. So, from that, I've been active all the way up to now. And I'm talking about all aspects of what we are calling hip hop right now. You know, I'm talking about the, uh, the breaking, the uh, you know, the b-boying, the graffiti, the rap, uh, the DJing, you know, and of course the MCing and the knowledge. Okay, so I've been involved in all five elements, and you know, first in them, you know, I'm not the, I'm not a master at some of them, and some of them I'm, I'm striving more to master, okay? But all of them I'm versed in. So, <clears throat> I say that to say this, you know, from when it so-called began, you know, I don't know how it began for you, I just know how it began for me, and then all the way to now, something I've seen, you know, I've seen what they call, what some of our people are saying, you know, this gangster rap. It came in and messed up everything. Okay? I've seen people say, all that positive BS, you know, that, that's not real. That ain't reality. Um, I've seen that. I remember back when NWA came out. Okay? At the time when that came out, I'm in Florida. So ghetto style DJs, bass music, two live crew, Gucci crew, uh, Poison Clan. Well, that was a little bit before Poison Clan, but um, you know, Jam Pony Express DJs. That's how we. That's how getting a Jam Pony take you here every damn thing. Um, I just we. I, I was in my thing. You know, we were in Florida doing our thing, just like a lot of places they were. Hip hop at that time was doing, we talking about early 80s to mid to late 80s. Hip hop was regionally, regionally 
doing his thing for people in their regions according to what was happening. Okay? So Florida being a warmer climate, closer to African climate, we was, a lot, we was about that dancing. A lot of bass music, you know, you always heard the congas. It's, 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 it's faster. It got the bass in it. We dancing, we getting it in. That was that was according to the climate. Now you know you got New York, hard snares, hard kick. You know just on the grind. This kind of grind music. There's nothing wrong with it. Just spoke to the time. You know, and and then you got Cali. Yo, you know Cali, they, they smoking good out there. A lot of bass line, a lot of grooves, a lot of grooviness. You know what I'm saying? Grooviness. You did. Um, but at the same time, all elements, you know, you had gangsters out here in Florida, gangsters in New York, gangsters out there. You had positive people uh, who was um, uplifting here for the African community and all of that. Florida, New York, out there, as well as Texas, as well as Chicago. Everybody had their sound. I can't go into all the sounds. That's for, that's for another video. But trust me, I'm versed in all of that. So I feel like I got the stripes to speak about this. So, but at that time, something that happened, here's a phenomenon. People think, okay, uh, the crackers, they put us up on, yeah, they let NWA in and, you know, they started and, you know, CIA thing, da, 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 da. Then you got people on the other side. I, one of my, one of my uh, good brothers, told me one time, Public Enemy destroyed hip hop. That's how this brother felt. Down with our crew. <laughs> he told us that one time, we had a long ass debate. You know, coming from somewhere, going, I mean, a long debate in the car. I was like, you wrong. You How you gonna say they destroyed it, you know? That's how he felt, you know? So, but something that happened at that time when these groups came out. I was a fan of all of those. Public Enemy, Two Live Crew, N.W.A., Ghetto Boys, De La Soul, uh, man, the list goes on. You name it. Uh, I was, I was on it. Okay, hip hop, you, you, it had to be dope to come out. You know, it couldn't just be lackluster. It got pushed out the way. Uh, Public Enemy, it, it made a new, it made room. Hip hop made room for who was dope. Okay all perspectives and it was underestimated by our enemy. Our enemy is a linear thinker. Alright and, and and hopes that we are thinking as linear as they, they couldn't see even if say say NWA was a CIA operative group they put us in they put them in there they let that go. Say that was you have to understand, I just want y'all to understand that our consciousness is deeper than what's on the playlist and what is being fed to us. Our, our shit is holistic, our shit is everywhere. So I say this, say this, say that, say this. At that time, you had a perceived positive group, groups from, you know, uh, Public Enemy, uh, Jungle Brothers. Uh, well, I won't even put Public Enemy in that group. I'll say you have positive groups like Jungle Brothers, the Native Tongues whole whole situation. Um, you know, you had uh, Soul to Soul. You know, you had that you had that vibe. And Public Enemy was one of the biggest groups and most influential of that side of things. You had your NWAs, Two Live Crew, uh, First Criminal Minded, KRS One, First Criminal Minded. I don't know if you know a lot of people tend to forget that about that album, but it was a groundbreaking album. Uh, you know, you had you had groups, you had good, so-called good, so-called bad. But here's the thing: how we work as Africans. You have positive and negative uh, uh, electromagnetism that creates a charge. Two positives 
can't make anything. It's gay. Two positives is gay. Two negatives. That's some gay shit. Positive and a negative. Now, now you're cooking with something. Now you have a charge. Now you have a spark. Okay? A, a battery will show you. And we created batteries. The jet. Plus. Minus. A charge. So even your perception of plus and minus creates a charge. Now, I'll say this. At the time of the Rodney King verdict that came down, and some of you know, you youngsters, you know, if you're, if you're 25 years or younger, or even 27 years and younger, you may not remember this real good, but I, I remember it. You know, I wasn't out there in L.A., but I, I damn sure was watching it like everybody else. When it happened, okay, when it happened, and the cops got off, and Rodney King was beat up, and you know what? He came out with a statement saying, can't we all just get along and all this thing? Exactly shit was going down. But when that happened, y'all, Africans rebelled. Nobody got on the got on the megaphone and led this. Al Sharpton didn't get out there and lead the rebellion. No, it just popped off. Why did it pop off? Here's one reason why it popped off. Because you had a song called Fight the Power and a song called Fuck the Police from two what seemed like opposing groups. That's those songs were huge. We got a song for the police that is getting no, I mean, damn near. I never heard it on the radio before. You only hearing that in the in, in your cars, the real hood CNN. Car culture. That got that song around. Okay? We we weren't so dependent on crackers to give us what we want to hear. We just got what we needed to hear. Now you had a so-called minus. And a so-called plus, that mix created a charge, and we rebelled. Okay, both was playing side by side. All right, and groups that were coming out of the wake of that, they kept it going. Some people say, "Oh, you know, Dr. Dre in the chronic." Destroy this and the third, but yo, Lil Black Boy was on that album. Okay? They, they, they spoke to that. Um, Lil Ghetto Boy, in the Ghetto Street, that joint. That was on there, along with a lot of other stuff. Okay? PE, can't trust it. Uh, move, all of that. That was going on, man. Um, you know, this I'm talking about, you know, in the wake and we and we still moving. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of songs was coming out. A lot of out a lot of albums. You had the trigger got no hard. And at the same time, you had uh Tribe Call Quest and a lot of you just had so many plus, so-called plus, so-called negative, creating a charge. And they was getting down with each other. It wasn't no I don't hang out with them or I hang out with them. Okay? And when we seen something that came down the pipe that uh, we might not could have swallowed because we felt like it was a move on what we coveted as our sound, our music. You know, and I'm not saying this brother wasn't uh, sincere in his music, but it was used. One of the one of the first ones that I've seen that was used hugely. Uh, to sway how what, what we like was MC Hammer. Okay? The brother was dancing. What's wrong with dancing? Nothing. That's African as I don't know what. That's what that's part of it. But it was uh sensationalized and white folks said and our enemy said, oh this is what we can use. We can use this. You know what I mean? Um, 
They didn't use NWA. They didn't use Public Enemy. All right. They didn't use that. Those, in my opinion, shit got by. <laughs> got by the ass. Because those was charges. Now, this brother, MC Hamley, was dancing. Hell yeah. And that Kundalini was rising. But what was it going towards? wasn't going towards justice for Rodney King. It was going towards selling Burger King, selling selling uh, burgers. Okay, that's when, that's your CIA. If there's going to be some operative shit, that's where that shit comes in at. All right. And now, let's, you know, I told you it's going to be a little long. So if you don't have time, you know, watch it later. But if you do, check it out. If your attention span is too short, uh, it's not your fault. That's the way of the world right now. But, you know, I'm doing this for for the G's, all right? I'm doing this for, for those who's about this liberation. So, you know, that's what it's about. So, um, now let's move forward. We had an inter, a inter, uh, intermission time or whatever you want to call it. We had groups that were born out of that, out of that phenomenon of gangster rap, as they called it, and positivity rap, as they called it, all right? <clears throat> you had groups who understood and mixed them, mixed them both, okay? After a while, Tribe Called Quest, they had the song, Suck a Nigga, 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 you know, they, they start understanding, okay? I got to look at this thing, you know, and they had songs about, you know, uh, sexual escapades, but at the same time, they had songs like Stephen Biko and, and different songs, they was trying to, so it was a mix of things. You had uh, groups like Gangstar, I mean, for this video, I mean, you know, <laughs> for those who know me, y'all know how I feel about Gangstar, but I ain't gonna go into that, but you had groups like that that were coming with the positive and the negative and trying to show you something. You had ghetto boys coming with the positive and the negative, but you know, like they were saying, okay, we're gonna make a charge here. Tupac, make a charge here. You did? And then, I, and I'm not trying to, I ain't trying to say nothing, I'm not trying to be biased, but the last group that I can remember in my mind that effectively because all of these groups I'm naming change lives, right? Nobody just heard this and just was like, oh, I'm done. No, if you understand whether you consciously or subconsciously or you just didn't know, but your melanin is just kicking in, they just was kicking in. Positive and negatives, they make the charge and that's what attracts us, a charge. Not two positives, because that's some homo, that's gay. Nothing will be produced. I call it homosexual. I, I, I learned something. Somebody put me on that they taking words and they adapting, you know, ad adopting a word and, and, and transforming. So, you know, I'm not going to give give them that kind of power. Gay means happy. That's very homosexual. A plus and a plus. A minus and a minus. Because it doesn't create anything. All right? It creates nothing. And this is all about crea creation. Creation. Sex, creation, all right? So, you know y'all say I'm probably reaching, but I'm not reaching, just break it, just, just check it out. So anyway, one of the last groups that, in my opinion, and I'm trying to be biased, but my brothers, Dan Prez, with the first album, Let's Get Free. Second one too, second one too, RBG, the second one. Um, and just our whole crew original people army crew uh, we understood that okay we understood that I don't know if it was consciously or unconscious we just doing our music but plus and negative creating the charge and I'm sure that I will change some lives let's get free and change some lives all right change my life <laughs> okay so um it's one of the last ones I can remember that came out like that uh, you know, a shout out to all those others, but, you know, they sometimes frowned upon 
how we came because we saying words like nigga and we uh you know we we understand the streets because that's where we come from but we also understand the elevation and we have love for our we have love for our people african liberation was at hand in our hearts you understand so we under so a charge has to happen okay the charge has to happen but that was one of the last groups that was that album came out in I think 2000. I think yeah, the year 2000. You know, besides our people army crew, you know, like my albums and a few other ones. No, I just can't remember anybody in 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 uh, having both of those things together. You know what I'm saying? And then it went a long stint. You had. Whole bunch of I'm just positive, positive, I'm so positive, positive rap. Then it came just negative. I'm just negative. All you know, I'm I'm talking about the perception, positive and negative. Oh man, all I talk about is dealing dope, 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 dope. I kill, I kill, I kill. I'm a dope dealer. You know, so many dope dealers, I be wondering where the goddamn crack is. It ain't enough crackheads for all these dope dealers. Ain't nobody making no money off dope. It ain't not enough crackheads. <laughs> all right? And, you know, all this positivity, positivity, all this positive, 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 positive. Never was a mix. The mix was gone. So then, because of the, the rebellion, no doubt, police brutality and our struggle for African liberation was still going. But something happened. Something happened. The media, they was able to lock down the incidents. Lock down the amount of incidents that you see on TV of police brutality and our African liberation struggle, whether it be a, 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 a victory or a challenge. You couldn't see it. Then came the internet explosion. The phone, how I'm making a video right now. You just couldn't just do this kind of shit back in the day. Couldn't get this viewpoint across to you unless I had an album, a, 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 a record deal, or you know, a movie deal, or. I, Something I had to be, do something huge to make the the media's cameras, the the enemy's cameras, get on me, and then I have to seize the moment and say what I gotta say. But now I can just do it like this. This is what happened. So in that happening, Oscar Grant is killed. Trayvon Martin is killed. Um, I can't keep. I can't, Davis, uh, the young brother up there, Davis in, uh, in Jacksonville that got shot for playing music for two lives, was killed. Uh, McBride, his sister, she got killed. Um, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, all, you know the name. The list is long as a motherfucker. Caught on the damn camera. It wasn't a wait for the news and you seeing some shit, you actually got to go on YouTube and see the killing, right? Now, what happened? We just waited on, shit, I was in Tallahassee, Florida when, when Rodney King got beat up, okay? With just news, you know, and just breaking news, and they, and they talked about that. And when that shit happened, we went to town, when that shit, when the when the verdict came down, you know, we went in motion. All right, just like everybody else across the country, we went in motion. You know, it wasn't no marching for shit. We weren't marching. We was cheering, seeing shit burning down. It was going. It was on. When these verdicts came down, what happened? Reaching out, trying to see, well, what happened to fix this problem? What happened? Where was the spark? There was no spark. Because it was, I'm all positive. Or I'm all negative. So, what 
chill happened. Nothing was born. Nothing was created. A lot of friction. You know? A lot of friction. But no sperm penetrating the egg, creating the osmosis. Mitosis. You know? All of that that creates a baby. When no baby getting born. You know why? Because of that. Who was prevalent on the airway? They caught up, y'all. They recognized, okay, this music is serious. There is no NWA, all right? There is no public enemy. There is no dead press on the radio. Not saying we need to play them, but where's the new one? I love that new Kendrick Lamar joint. Love that album. I love, well, I heard some of, I, 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 I flushed with J. Cole a little bit, but it's a little, he got, he got some apology type of shit happening, where Kendrick Lamar, he going all the way in, I, I, I can dig that. Um, and we have our music, our music is, is, is cracking, you know what I mean? We have to champion what's happening, but look at, but let me, let me break something else. First of all, cause, so, so that didn't happen. So let's get that point. I just want to say that point. And here's something. When that Kendrick Lamar joint dropped, it dropped soft as hell. Now, his first album came out with the biggest boom. Of course you anticipate the second album. Where's the big push and blow behind that? What happened? They remember. Now, do we expect our enemy to put out what's necessary for us to have African liberation? No. I'm just saying, take it to the bank. Take it to the lab, I mean. Look at it. Look at the different, um, the different shit that's going on with it. Look at the R&B that was coming out at that time as opposed to at this time. I mean, music is such a big part of it. Look who's the top rappers. Say if, say if, okay, boom, let's do this. Say Kendrick Lamar is the public enemy, if you want to say, of now. I'm not giving them that. I'm just saying, say, because we don't have nobody that can be that. You know what I mean? Or the, we can't call him the Tupac. We can't call him none of that. We could just call him Kendrick Lamar. But let's just say this for argument's sake. And say... Young Thug is the quote unquote negative, you know, because I say, like I say, you know, we got to get rid of this linear paradigm that these crackers got to see. I don't care what they say is positive and negative. And I don't care what a colonized African mind is saying positive and negative is. You got to look at shit holistically. If you're not looking at it like that, then you're already defeated. You're thinking with your enemy's mind. So you fucked up anyway. You're done. All right. If you're thinking that cursing and you know different stuff that Africans been doing for fucking centuries, centuries, millennia. How about before crackers was even around? Before a word for some of the stuff like smoking uh, weed and drinking and that kind of stuff. Man, yo, we gotta get into our history. All right. We gotta get into our history. We gotta know where, just where the fuck we come from. We do. Go ask somebody. Stop looking to hear what you wanna hear and look and see what the truth is. Okay? You exist on much more planes than this fucking shit that you think you exist on. And there's certain stuff here that you don't know that your ancestors put here to get you back in the zone. All right? So anyway, though, say Young Thug is that person, Kendrick Lamar is that person. Here's something that NWA and, and uh, Public Enemy had in common. They were men. Wasn't no androgynous looking ass shit. I don't know, you know, it, it wasn't, neither one of them was soft. All right? They were men on the mic. They both frowned upon homosexuality. 
They both frowned upon that shit. Both. They was African men coming with a perspective from our African, from where how we lived, how we live right now. Okay, when the women came out, the women came out like women. All right, of course, the uh, you know coming through the the uh, the white man's uh, paradigm of hip hop industry. Yeah, you know, and men driven hip hop industry. Yeah, you had to have a voice like MC Light, deep, kind of raspy, you know, or you know. But Queen Latifah came out, you know. Um, I kind of don't remember her wearing too many skirts, but you see where I'm going, you know. It was a lot of women who did come out that you know they did they think. But anyway, move off of that because that's another subject that I want to get on another time. But dealing with NWA and PE, they were men doing what they do. Now, these two brothers, I mean, I'm not trying to say Kendrick Lamar ain't no man. I know you're a man. And I know, I don't know for, for a fact because I don't know the brother, but I feel like this brother is, you know, a heterosexual male from Compton that's doing his thing. And he loves black folks, all right? And he does music for Africans. You know what I mean? <clears throat> NWA and PE, for sure, did music for Africans, without a doubt. And it said that in their lyrics. They frowned upon homosexuality in their lyrics. They wanted us to be able to do whatever the hell we want to do. And they was against this system. For sure. In their lyrics. Kendrick Lamar, yeah. I feel him. He, he flying. He tried, he tried to come, come out pretty good with this second one. I'm in the radar on Section 80 a little bit. Um, I mean, on... on, on, on Mad City. Section 80, he was coming at you. They had both had plus and minus coming at you. Section 80, playing by the rules. New album, Pimp Butterfly Joint. He coming at you again, you know, and, and he's coming with it. He's coming with it. I love that damn album. It's great. Young Thug, I don't know if that's, I mean, you know, you see how the man, you know, you see what he's doing, you see how he's dressing. I can't even say that's the youth. I can't say that shit. I'm out here in the streets every day. I get out every day. I see no, none of the youngsters. I hear him pumping his music, though. They ain't wearing no dresses. He don't wear no goddamn, you know, nose ring like that shit. You know, all kind of little shit, all this little shit, all, you know. We ain't doing, you know, they not doing that out all that calling, you know, that homo talk, calling your, 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 your homies my love and my hubby and shit like that. Come on, this is the number one gangster rap, quote unquote, gangster rap artist, trap artist. He's turned into the trap star, trap artist, you know, just so y'all y'all don't know, but I know y'all know, I'm just talking. I'm just saying, this is the number one dude. And when they asked him about Trayvon, uh, about uh, one of the situations, I don't know if it was Trayvon, Michael Brown, can't remember who they asked him about right off top, but he said that ain't none of my business. That's the laws. They handle that. NWA would have never said that. So, with these being our pluses and minuses, quote unquote, our negative and positive rap, it's an element missing there. And we're letting crackers dictate what it is. We're letting them dictate to us what it is. And then we're regurgitating their dictation. We're saying that if you act like this, then you're good. You don't act, if you act like this, then you're bad. You know. Sound like some, sound like some, some, some shit that the white folks done planted in our heads. We have to look at our shit from a holistic viewpoint. Now, 
soul. Music is key to washing. Now, how do we get, get around that or how do we solve this issue? There's many solutions. One of them is just our African traditions, the shit that we, that we frown upon, that we uh, uh, shy away from, you know, that voodoo shit, all of that. You shy away from that. You don't want none of that. No, it ain't that. People say, leave your religion in your pocket. Well, what you're not understanding is, this is not religion. All right? All our crackers bought you religion. Even putting things in category like that, they bought you that. All right? We're just talking about nature. Natural forces becoming one with nature. And that is deep, because everything is nature, so become one with it. Understand where you fit and where it fits in you, because it's all us. It's in and it's out. You know, I heard something. Shit is deep. They say, somebody asked somebody, uh, do you believe in, you know, you got to believe in the voodoo shit. You got to believe in these African spirituality things for it to, uh, to work and all this on you and all that. And I say this. Do you believe in the ocean? Do you believe in the ocean? Do you believe in the sun? Whether you do or not, if you step in the ocean, you're going to get wet. Whether you believe in the sun or not, if you stand in the sun long enough, you're, you're, you'll begin to tan. Regardless, whether you believe in it or not, you're going to feel the heat of it. Whether you believe in it or not. So our traditions and African, as Africans, we are based in nature. All right? That's where our strength is at. Pluses and negatives creating a charge. That is life. That's where our win is at. This cracker is linear. They're on a linear level of everything. I don't care how good they sing, dance, whatever. The mind, the mind is linear. It's a linear thought process and it comes out all the time. All right. We have to get off of that. We have to get back to our African traditions which are not linear, but holistic, coming from all points, in, out, up, down, everywhere. As above, so below, we got so, our shit goes far back. It has no beginning and no end, you did? So, that's the real deal right now. That's something that we've always understood and just worked in, just worked in that paradigm. But now, in the age of I have to spell it out for your ass, this is the age of spell it out for my ass because I don't read, I don't want to experience, I just want to watch videos and swear I learned something and now I know something because I watched this many videos. So here's a video for you to learn. But you can't get into this shit by just watching a vid. You're going to have to touch and feel. That's why I got, I still use the MPC ASR 10. All right, my DJ still use techniques. He don't. He ain't using CDJs. I don't make beats on the computer. Now, I'm not saying nothing's wrong. Hey man, make the beats how you make the beats. All right, but where we, where we messing up at is the feeling, the charge. We're losing the charge. That's why shit ain't cracking. That's why when you get around folk that that understand, yo, I feel you a mile away coming. I know what you're coming with. It's so easy to navigate in between a lot of this bullshit that's out here right now. That's coming on the African community that wants liberation and just African community at large. It's easy to navigate it because I still work with the analog, the analog uh, feel that we created. That 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 is us. Not this digital domain that these crackers have forced upon us. 
All right, African traditions is analog. Everything else is digital. A lot of numbers. This shit is charges. The other shit is calculation of charges. Calculation of charges, and our shit is the charge. We gotta get back to being the charge. Stop trying to cut out a negative and everything is positive. That's homo shit. Stop trying to cut out anything positive and keep it all negative. That's some homo young thug bullshit. That's all I got to say. You know, again, Tahir RBG, Repat Nation is a situation. Shout out to my RBGs worldwide. African Liberation is what time it is. Got new album coming out that's going to have the positive and negative charge on there. <laughs> uh, Hymns of the Whirlwind. Got some more things coming, man. You know, hey, just stay tuned. And that's how we doing it. If you want to get one of these bandanas, RBG flag, original flags, uh, you can hit me up. Hit us up. This is it right here. Hit us up at all it's all rbg at gmail.com i-t-s-a-l-l-r-b-g at gmail.com and um we take care of you we got the rbg flag bandanas we got the rbg saint candles um <clears throat> you know but just email me email me Follow me on, on the on Instagram, Tahir RBG, T-A-H-I-R RBG. Follow me on Facebook, wherever you want to follow me. Twitter, all that shit. I'm, I'm there, but I'm also here. So come and see me. <laughs> all right? Peace, love, and black power.